the x-ray in front of us is of great teaching value almost instantly those of you who have some experience can identify a number of positive findings bilateral perihilar diffuse opacities extending from hyla towards the peripheries of lungs perhaps you can also conclude that the opacities are not only in air spaces or in alveoli of lungs but also in interstitial space some of these lines visible here are septal lines rather than blood vessels heart is clearly enlarged the transverse diameter of heart is bigger than half of the internal diameter of chest and the appearance of consolidation is somewhat like a bat's wing sign a bat's wing consolidation is associated with pulmonary edema and it starts from hyla and fans out towards the periphery of lungs leaving lung apices and bases relatively aerated and of course uh, there are signs of fibrosis you can see thickened pleura here here and also here you can see loss of lung volume here and these streaky lines are typical of fibrosis fibrosis means scarring of tissues and as a result of healing process scarred tissue decreases in volume and loses its ability to function it's like burning a piece of foam from middle the piece of foam will shrink in size lung fibrosis is similar the scar tissue gets smaller in size and pulls pleura uh, towards the center of the fibrosis this is especially true if the fibrosis is on one side it and if it is especially in apices it will pull the trachea also as a result of fibrosis you have slight loss of lung volume which is probably partly responsible for mediastinal voiding also there may be a cardiovascular component responsible for it so there is a mediastinal voiding just above the carina if you look at the left claustrophenic angle here there is a soft tissue density between chest wall and lung parenchyma running almost parallel to the chest wall this is what is known as lamellar effusion it is caused by accumulation of fluid under visceral pleura and it is not a true pleural effusion notice the absence of a typical meniscus sign lamellar effusion is typically found in cardiac failure and given the description one may easily think of pulmonary edema but this x-ray has been uploaded on www.redrounds.com under the heading of pneumocystis carinii pneumonia pneumocystis carinii pneumonia starts as an alveolar process and then causes inflammation in interstitium as well often making it a good example of both alveolar and interstitial pneumonia both radiologically as well as from histo histopathology point of view pulmonary edema starts as interstitial process and then involves alveoli sometimes the radiologic appearance of both pulmonary edema and pneumocystis carinii pneumonia can be exactly the same as in this case the difference however is that pneumocystis carinii pneumonia is an infection from an infectious agent that causes accumulation of exudates in alveoli and then involves interstitium versus pulmonary edema is a leakage of capillary fluid in interstitium and then in alveoli either because of congestion or because of increased permeability of capillaries around alveoli of lungs just to confuse you there is cardiac enlargement here you have laminar effusion uh, to reveal the cause of cardiac enlargement you have to have further investigations such as echocardiography or ecg initially pneumocystis carinii pneumonia was thought to be a result of a protozoan infection which is a unicellular animal kindly note the use of a specific word animal rather than 
non-specific world of microorganism. Recently, the bug responsible for Nemesis cariniae pneumonia has been reclassified as a fungus and it has been renamed as Nemocystis gerovitzii. Before AIDS epidemic, it used to be a very rare infection only in immunocompromised, immunocompromised patients such as those on chemotherapy, but it is a very common infection nowadays in AIDS patients. This bug has frequently been found in environment but healthy human body can easily take care of it. Healthy human body seems to be using T helper cells to kill this fungus. Other findings, uh, there is a slight increase in angle of carina which is certainly more than 70 degrees. Is this because of fibrosis or it is because of left atrial enlargement which pushes the left main bronchus up to increase this angle. X-rays taken in supine position may also make this angle look bigger. Notice the X-ray does not mention whether the X-ray was taken in erect or supine position but we can use the rules of gravity. If you notice the both, bo both breasts are hanging down towards the feet of the patient. If the patient was supine the most of the mass of the breast will uh, appear on the uh, side of the chest walls. So this is uh, definitely an erect view. An accessory fissure here, an accessory lobe. This is a normal variation gas in the splenic flexure of the colon. This is transverse colon here right claustrophenic angle looks normal.